Hello everyone! In past videos, I've discussed how part of evolution's strength is derived from its ability to make predictions. Today we're going to look at one such prediction and the creationist reaction to it. But you should also notice that this is a re-upload. I made some large mistakes in the first version, so here it is corrected. Let's jump right in. Our DNA is held in the cellular nucleus, and when cells need to undergo replication, they coil the DNA into long linear strands called chromosomes. Non-hominin hominids, which are non-human great apes, have 24 pairs of chromosomes with two pairs being homologous to our single pair of chromosome 2s. The primates that are our next closest relatives, the hylobatids, or gibbons, have members with wildly different karyotypes, having 26, 25, 22, and 19 pairs. All the other simians, or monkeys, have even a greater variety of karyotypes, meaning chromosome variations are not uncommon in primates. So what happened to our extra pair of chromosomes? They couldn't have simply disappeared since that would have been lethal to the carrier. Rather, biologists predicted that either the common ancestor of great apes had 23 chromosome pairs, and thereafter the non-human great apes had to experience a chromosome fission, giving them 24, or the common ancestor had 24 pairs, and within the line leading to humans, after splitting from the chimpanzee line, two chromosomes fused end to end, resulting in us having 23 pairs. The latter hypothesis is far more parsimonious, since that would only require one fusion event compared to three independent fissions among the other great apes, according to the other hypothesis. Thus, scientists expected to find one human chromosome that was the result of a fusion and is homologous to two chromosomes that remain separate in the other great apes. This was identified to be our modern chromosome 2. Now, researchers know chromosomes fused because these structures have specific parts called a centromere and telomeres. The centromere is the center of the chromosome, and telomeres are the ends. The telomere is pretty easily recognizable, since it's specified by repeats of the sequence T-T-A-G-G-G. -G -G. Given the centony, which is the state of two or more genes being present on the same chromosome, between human chromosome 2 and ape chromosomes 13 and 14, or 2A and 2B, researchers predicted that if a fusion occurred, they should find remnants of a telomere at this specific location, and remnants of a centromere at this other specific location. These predictions were met by Ijo et al. 1991 and Avarello et al. 1992. At this point, I feel that it's necessary to drive home this point about the prediction. It isn't the mere fact that there was a chromosomal fusion that is strong evidence for evolution and our shared ancestry with the other apes. After all, humans could have been specially created with 48 chromosomes and experienced the fusion event in the same way. The reason that this is good evidence for evolution is that it was a successful prediction based purely on the premise that humans share a common ancestry with apes. The fusion event logically followed from common ancestry plus the observation of different chromosome counts in humans versus the other apes. Creationists using their model of separate ancestry would have had no reason whatsoever to think that a fusion occurred. Their model would have explained the difference in the number of chromosomes by saying, that's the way God made us. When a model makes a specific, risky prediction that is then found to be accurate, this is a good indication that the model is true. So, biologists made a prediction based on evolution, and that prediction turned out to be true. It's not even the only one to be made. We still have Tiktaalik, Microraptor, and others. Then we're done, right? Not even close. This is one prediction creationists have attempted to respond to. Their arguments are primarily predicated on a paper authored by creationist Jeffrey Tompkins in 2013 titled Alleged Human Chromosome 2 Fusion Site Encodes an Active DNA Binding Domain Inside a Complex and Highly Expressed Gene, Negating Fusion. Tompkins, as well as wacky creationist Jerry Bergman, have been trying for years to destroy the chromosome fusion argument. Their attempts have not been especially successful, as documented by P.Z. Myers in Basics, How Can Chromosome Numbers Change, 
creationist FUD refuted, and Jeffrey Tompkins is up to his old dishonest tricks again. Other places, like the blog Ruhif, have similarly pointed out Tompkins' inability to dismiss evidence for the chromosomal fusion. As Ruhif notes, Tompkins' own paper, The Chromosome 2 Fusion Model of Human Evolution, Part 2, Reanalysis of the Genomic Data, displays a picture of repeats of the reverse telomeric sequence. Tompkins is attempting to show that the vestigial telomeric regions don't exist. Because adenine matches up with thymine, cytosine matches with guanine, and because of the orientation of the DNA sequence, the reverse sequence of TTA, GGG, is CCC, TAA. The existence of so many repeats of the sequence is indicative of the vestigial telomere region. Or imagine the pattern, the cat sat on the mat. This is analogous to the TTA, GGG. Researchers not only found this, but also the reverse. So, Tompkins' paper betrays his very argument. But, Tompkins also says in his 2013 paper, quote, Second, the putative fusion sequence is highly degenerate given the inferred evolutionary timescale, close quote. Strange, right? Is Tompkins suggesting that the telomeric region should be in perfect condition after 6 million years? Tompkins posits that the fusion occurred between 3 and 6 million years ago, but it could have occurred as far back as 7 million years ago. Why shouldn't the vestigial telomeres be degenerate? You see, telomeres are eaten away during each cell division in humans, as DNA polymerases can't finish the job completely at the lagging strand. When it is time to form new telomeres, enzymes called telomerases repeatedly add a specific motif of nucleotides that TTA, GGG, or CCC, TAA, to make new telomeric repeats at the ends of chromosomes. Thus, mutations that happen in telomeres are simply erased when new telomeres are created. The only way for the telomeres to change in sequence is by changing the enzymes such that they add a different motif. So it's not as though the telomeric sequence at the ends of chromosomes are highly conserved because any mutation in the telomeres is deleterious and wouldn't be passed on to the next generation. The sequence of the vestigial telomeres in chromosome 2 isn't highly conserved because the mutations that happen there aren't erased by the process of telomere shortening and replacement, which only happens at the ends of chromosomes. So again, why shouldn't we expect it to be degenerate? But this isn't Tompkins' main argument. Tompkins' heavy hitter is that the fusion site, that is where the telomeres crashed into each other, is part of the DDX11L2 regulatory RNA helicase gene. Now it's important to understand how the telomeric region started doing this. Tompkins insists that because the region is part of a gene, it could never have resulted from a fusion of telomeres. So is this argument valid? Well, let's take this in five parts. First, Tompkins claims that the DDX11L2 is a gene that is highly expressed, but it's not. It's a pseudogene with no known function. The claim that it's functional because it is expressed is bunk because the expression level is so small it's indistinguishable from random noise. Second, the pseudogene itself doesn't actually span the fusion site. The whole sequence of the gene sits on one side of the fusion site. The claim that it does span the fusion site comes from an alternative transcript that does span it. This alternative transcript has one extra exon that is further upstream at the other side of the fusion site. But this alternative transcript isn't recovered very often, and most transcripts don't span it, which is why it is concluded that the gene itself doesn't span it. The reason for that alternative transcript can be easily explained by the presence of a promoter-like sequence further upstream at the other side of the fusion site, where RNA polymerase would occasionally start transcribing the DNA, and thus would make the fusion site part of an intron of a transcript that is longer than usual. Third. Even assuming that the gene is functional and that it does span the fusion site, so what? Are fusion sites within a gene impossible? No. Tompkins' argument relies on the false premise that a gene can't form that spans a fusion site after the fusion event. But he doesn't give any evidence for why this is the case. And there is evidence to suggest that it is possible. The 2017 paper, Adaptive Evolution by Spontaneous Domain Fusion and Protein Relocalization, details how the gene for cytosolic d-guanylate cyclase 
fused with the gene for fatty acid desaturase, and generated a new adaptive phenotype. So, even if Tompkins is right about it being a functional gene and spanning the fusion site, that doesn't make the fusion site not a fusion site. It just simply means that the gene formed after the fusion event. Fusion sites and genes aren't mutually exclusive things. Fourth, in chimps and humans, all the genes of the DDX11L gene family are located right next to telomeres at the ends of chromosomes. DDX11L2 is one exception being located in the middle of a chromosome right next to telomeric sequences. The presence of a gene like DDX11L2, a member of a telomeric specific gene family, near the alleged fusion site is only more evidence for the chromosomal fusion event, not evidence against it. Last, synteny between all the chromosomes of humans and other great apes is already a strong indication that chromosome 2 is the result of a fusion event. It isn't just about the telomeric sequences around the fusion site, which Tompkins wants to fixate on. In other words, Tompkins has failed yet again to assail the telomeric fusion event, which stands as a fantastic example of evolution's predictive power. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.